is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. On the show, uh, did you guys see Miles Garrett? Miles Garrett said he pondered quitting football after the Mason Rudolph incident. He says he's become a better man and wants to clear the air with the QB. The you know I read this story right, and my my problem is that he stuck with his guns that that Mason said the N word. And there were two black players and a white player that were around the two guys in the middle of that fight. Nobody corroborated his story. And two of the guys were his guys. Okay? So you'd figure, and one of them was Mike Pouncey. If you know anything about Mike Pouncey, if Mike Pouncey heard the guy say an N-word, it doesn't matter if it's his teammate he would have said it. No, no, I can't defend uh, Mason. He said the N-word to him. He would have said it. Pouncey would not have held back for something like that. And the other Browns player, I forgot the guy's name, if he hears it, he would have defended his teammate and did not. So in my book, the way all of this broke down, and, and, and when I hear Miles Garrett say this, is because he's guilty. You know, Mason is... He is steadfast and stayed on his story. The only guy that waffles and has given us all kinds is this guy. This is the only guy that didn't have a straight story from the get-go. This is the only guy now says, hey, I did uh, read the – this is how it goes, okay? Um, uh, Mason Rudolph, he hit him over the head with the QB helmet last season. He contemplated quitting football. I did, the Browns defensive end said Monday – an exclusive interview, whether it was because of the decision or my decision, it was whether this was going to continue. The faithful night on November 14th when Garrett lost his cool, ripped Rudolph's helmet and whacked him over the head with it, waning seconds of the Browns' 21-7 victory. Garrett questioned everything he thought he knew about himself and imagined life outside the lines. Uh, What I was going to do without football, he said. What was I going to be? Who am I in the end of the day? Was I still going to be giving football without that kind of income coming in? Was, was I still going to take those trips to see people? Was I still going to give back to charities? Was I still going to give clothes and shoes to schools around me and to coaches that have impacted me? All these things were on my mind. He later, he later told ESPN that he heard Rudolph call him the N-word, something he has told teammates that night, an accusation the quarterback denies and Garrett almost walked away from the game he loves after three years, and it ended on that ugly thud. I would have been okay, he said. I love football. I love competing. I love my teammates, and I definitely want to win. But at the end of the day, I'm still a guy. I'm still a young man who has a lot of life to live, and my life is much more than football. I just would move on to something else I enjoy and found another way to save my competitive nature. Whether it would have been trying out for a basketball team or going to play baseball like Michael Jordan, I would have found something else I love to do, whether I was riding, uh, coach, or whatever. I would have left with my head held high, and I wouldn't look back. All right? So the problem is that you're the guy living with regrets. You're the guy that feels guilty. Why is it that Mason Rudolph doesn't feel guilty? Why is it that Mason Rudolph had all the conviction in the world that he never said it? And the three people around you never heard it. And so this is a, a, this, there's no doubt he's a hell of a player and all of that, but this is a young man that needs to come clean and needs to apologize for everything how he acted, accusing somebody of saying something they didn't say. There's cameras everywhere, okay? If he would have said it, they have those cameras from NFL Films. They have all the sound. It would have come out. The league would have used it against Mason Rudolph because they wouldn't want this to happen. And they're not going to hide that at this point, not in this environment. You know what I mean? So... Nobody backed up Miles Garrett. 
All I'm seeing from Miles Garrett is a guy that feels absolutely guilty about how he acted and what he did. That's what I'm seeing there. The fact that in some degree, like, I pondered quitting. Like, he's looking for sympathy or something. This is so wrong, man. Well, no, it's, it, it's not so much that it's wrong. It's just phony. You know what I mean? Just come clean, dude. And we'll be all right as a society. Everybody, Look, everybody screws up. You're screwed up, dude. Just apologize for it profusely. Apologize for using the helmet. Apologize for accusing somebody of something that they didn't do. Just say you were wrong. You let the emotions get the best of you, whatever, and we'll all forgive and forget. But if you keep at it, nobody's going to have any sympathy for you. Like I don't right now. I don't have any sympathy for you, Miles Garrett. None, dude. You were the idiot with the helmet in your hands. Then you're the idiot accusing somebody of something disgusting that they didn't do. If they did it, I have no problem. I'm backing you, Miles Garrett. I'm behind you all the way if he said it. But the problem is there are no mics that can corroborate your story. None of the play, the three players around you guys, none of them could corroborate your story. And so you have no proof. You got to let it go. And you got to apologize for everything. Okay? Everything. That's what you got to apologize for. And then people can forgive you. Then people can give you a second chance. But like this, this is not the way you go about these kind of things. No way.